Hi there, it's Jeff here. Here's a quick look at a really good example, I think, of the Challenger brand in an oligopoly, the rise of Octopus Energy. Now, Octopus is a really interesting example of a business that has grown super quickly. It didn't exist 10 years ago, uh, but in 2023, it had a turnover of over £9 billion. That continued to grow last year, and they turned a net profit of £180 million in 2024. This chart shows the market share of domestic gas suppliers in Great Britain quarterly, and you can see the rise of uh, Octopus Energy in the, in the dark black line there. British Gas, for many, many years, has been the dominant player. But in fact, in 2024, Octopus overtook British Gas. Founded in 2015, so only 10 years ago, uh, founded by uh, Greg and Stuart Jackson, two undergraduate economics students, or two graduates of Cambridge, uh, it's, it's grown very rapidly to ascend to become the dominant force in the UK energy sector. So it's now got a 24% market share. It's a good example, by the way, of how a challenger brand can scale quickly, in part because of its own internal growth, but also because of selective acquisitions. In December 2023, uh, Octopus acquired Shell Energy's UK household energy supply business, that added 1.3 million customers, and they also took over a million customers from the collapsed supplier Bulb Energy, which went bust in 2022. So here's a, a good example of growth through acquisition. I think Octopus is a really good example for your notes of a challenger brand. Uh, it, is, it, it is a disruptor in the energy market. We'll talk a bit more about that in a second. It's actively positioned itself as a smarter, greener, 100% renewables, and also more customer-friendly alternative than the established existing incumbent firms. Their proprietary platform, Kraken, really helps, which automates customer service, billing, and energy usage insights. Now, as Octopus grows, and we've seen how fast it has grown, it can negotiate better rates for wholesale energy, smart meters, hardware, when it's buying the if you like the infrastructure and the equipment and software services. So as they grow, in theory, they should be able to bring down their unit costs and achieve economies of scale. The marginal cost of adding an extra user is fairly low. So Octopus Energy is, in a sense, different to traditional suppliers such as British Gas. They are 100% renewable electricity, whereas British Gas has a mix of fossil fuels and renewables. Uh, Octopus makes much more use of dynamic time of use uh, tariffs. We'll talk about that in a second. Whereas ga British Gas mostly fixed or standard variable tariffs. And Octopus prides itself in terms of dynamic efficiency with a highly rated, fast, digital first customer service. Traditional suppliers have made progress in that, but are often a little bit back uh, behind the curve with call centre backlogs. Now, this is, a, this is a market at the moment, the energy system. Uh, Octopus think it's broken. The energy system is one where, on average, the main suppliers charge very similar standard variable tariffs and the cheapest annual tariff. tariff. Uh, Octopus says that they always try and price below the energy price cap, but in, in an oligopoly, there's always a tendency to charge similar prices, in particular because they're buying uh, the gas, for example, at set, if you like, national prices. That's why there's not much variation in these tariffs. Octopus, though, has used what's called agile octopus or time of use tariffs. So this is where the price of energy that you pay changes every half an hour based on the wholesale electricity market rates. And uh, Octopus Go is a good example of dynamic efficiency, specifically designed for EV owners. Uh, you can uh, charge your EVs uh, at very low prices, particularly from midnight until the early hours of the morning. So the idea here is to use this kind of dynamic pricing, uh, technology-driven pricing, uh, to uh, encourage more people to use electricity when demand on the grid is low and energy is also greener. There's even periods of negative pricing where customers, for example, uh, with uh, solar power, generating their own power, can be paid to use electricity. Now, just recently, Octopus has been one of the drivers uh, lobbying for uh, the introduction of zonal pricing in the UK. They argue that the national energy market is essentially broken uh, because it sets a nationally set cost price, largely based on the price of gas, even though the UK, of course, is heavily dependent on imports of gas and has a fast-growing renewable sector. 
So zonal pricing or regional pricing would be where the cost would be based more on local supply and demand conditions. And they would argue that that would mean the wholesale price would be set more often by renewables rather than imported gas. So in areas where renewable supply is extremely strong, although not necessarily fully connected to the grid, this would presumably help areas such as Scotland with a very well advanced uh, renewable supply. So why this video? Well, Oxford Energy is, I think, a great applied example of a business that literally did not exist, what, 10, 12 years ago. It's now the market leader in gas supply in the UK. Uh, it's a challenger, but it's a challenger that has risen to prominence and scaled quickly, in part because of the dynamism of their co-founders, but also because they're driven by technology uh, and that means they can often grow extremely quickly and achieve those economies of scale. So I think a great example to add to your revision notes. Thanks for joining in.